right, so if you're looking at that 3.25 paper, we're going to be learning about something called limiting reagents today. Um, obviously, if you were making a real grilled cheese sandwich, then you would have like multiple slices of cheese and butter, and maybe you'd even put some like bacon in there. Um, but we're just going to make this really simple for today. And so in order to make a grilled cheese sandwich, you need two pieces of bread and one piece of cheese. That's like the bare minimum. Um, so if you have 50 pieces of bread and 10 pieces of cheese, how many grilled cheese sandwiches can you make? 10. 10. Why? Right, so you would run out of cheese. Um, so the cheese is your limiting reagent. The limiting reagent is the thing that determines how much product we can make because it gets, it like runs out. Whereas we do end up having extra bread left over, but you can't make a grilled cheese if you don't have cheese. So I know this is like a really simple analogy, but it really is, um, it just kind of puts into perspective or it kind of like explains what it is we're learning about today. So. I think I put this all in your notes. You don't actually have to write any of this down until we get to the math problems. Uh, but the limiting reagent is the thing that gets completely used up in the chemical reaction. So it's like our ingredient or our reactant that gets used up. And so because it runs out, it determines how much of the final product we can make. The excess reagent is just the opposite of that. It's the thing that does not get completely used up. So it's the thing that we have leftovers or extra of. And so to, deter to determine the limiting reagent, um, just like you did with the other stoichiometry three-step equations, you're still going to balance the equation first, but this time you have to do two stoichiometric equations. You have to do one for each of the reactants, um, and in both of these situations, the given is your reactant, and then the product is your wanted, because you're trying to figure out how much product can I make if I have this much reactants. So like, how many grilled cheese can I make if I have 10 pieces of cheese? How many grilled cheese can I make if I have 25 pieces of bread? And so whichever one produces the least or the lower amount of product, that's the limiting reagent because it limits how much of the product we can make. So we are going to do one example here. Um, our first step would be to balance the equation. Um, so we've got our two givens here uh, to balance this out. This is all you need. And then you're just going to do two three-step equations using the two reactants as your givens. So we've got 80 grams of copper and 25 grams of sulfur. And so we're going to do a stoichiometry problem for each of those reactants to figure out how much of that product or how much of the copper one sulfide we can make. So what are we going to put in that very first box? Jake? Um, we're going to put 1.2 grams of Yep. And I think I threw an extra sig fig on yours, did I? Is that why? Okay. So you're going to put 80.0 grams of copper in, or 80 grams of copper in the first box. And then our next stop, or our next box, um, I already kind of started filling it out for you on your paper, but remember this is just the getting it from grams to moles. So we are going to use our molar mass of copper. So you just need to fill that in on the bottom. And then what goes in the middle box? Mm-hmm. Yep. And where did you get those numbers from? Yeah. Exactly. So remember, our product is our wanted, so it's the um, copper one sulfide. So we're just putting a one right there, and our given is copper. That's what we're starting with. So it gets a two because there's a two in front of copper in the balance equation. And then what is going to go in the final section here? We're going to need a molar mass. The molar mass of what? Are wanted, Cu2S. So go ahead and calculate that out, see what you get for an answer. And after you've multiplied the top and divided the bottom, what did you get for an answer? I just rounded mine, uh, but you can do 100.2, that is fine. And so then we're just going to do the same exact thing for this next three step equation. What's the only difference here? What do you think? Yes. So you're just doing sulfur now, so you have 25 grams of sulfur. And what's the molar mass of sulfur? Check your periodic table real quick. 
32.06. And then the next different thing is just your numerator for this next step, um, the denominator, or sorry, the denominator, because our given is now sulfur instead of copper. But the rest of it is all the same because our wanted is still the copper one sulfide. So go ahead, multiply the top, divide the bottom, and see what you get. Who got an answer for that next one? Max? Uh, 124.34. Yep. So we have enough copper to make 100 grams of our product, but we only have enough sulfur to make 124 grams of our product. So how much product can we actually make? Uh, right. You can only make 100 grams. Um, and so which of those reactants is our limiting reagent? Yeah, so the copper. So the copper is going to run out first. So copper is our limiting reagent for this problem because it's going to run out first. Even though we're going to have some sulfur left over, we can't actually make 124 grams because there's not enough copper to make 124 grams. So that is it. That's how you do limiting reagents. You just have to do two stoichiometry problems, one for each reactant. Your product is always your wanted. Um, and whichever one produces less is the limiting. So go ahead and try those two practice problems on the back. And then there is a thing that says review for quiz. I was going to do the quiz next class, but I'm postponing it. So it's actually going to be next Thursday. So there's not a ton of information for the quiz, but um, I'll get your papers graded and passed back to you next class. That way you can use them to review. And that's it.